Great to have you join us on another exciting episode of Art House. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Let's check out what we have lined up for you on this week's episode of the program. A new kid on the block. That's what some might refer to this gallery as, but it just got a facelift, so we'll be seeing what they have within. To this group exhibition taking place at another gallery in Lagos. We'll give you details of that after we take our art quote for this week. The head will never be the tail. Let's begin with the first exhibition of amazing works of art at the refurbished Nomadic Art Gallery in Lagos. The Nomadic Art Gallery, which is devoted to diasporic art, is wearing a new look. The art community has been invited to celebrate this rebirth with intriguing pieces that reflect the beauty and ingenuity in the African contemporary world and artists in diaspora. of this exhibition is really about um, different perspective on how um, time travels, uh, how artists are seeing the way um, time moves uh, and the way um, life moves through different phases when you're looking back and when you're looking ahead. So you are going to see in some of the images you have here, you're going to see um, Spider-Man, which is the future, and you're going to see some uh, relic of the very old as well. And it all ties together in this essence of time. So that's kind of the exhibition we have now. And in addition to that, we have an exhibition downstairs with a number of additional artists that also ties into different other themes that the artists are highlighting. From detailed sculptural images to paintings done in an array of media in all shapes and sizes. My work is inspired by nature and so many things, but focused on all faces of womanism and some of my vivid dreams. But professionally, I started painting in 2020, and um, it's really been focused on, on burdening um, women in arts. I like to portray them in a more um, um, relaxed way, where it doesn't burden them with responsibilities, because most of the art that I saw growing up they would be cooking or carrying load on their head or, you know, um, uh, burdened with responsibilities of childbearing or childbirth. So, a lot of my work tries to unburden that and also portray them in a central way, which is non voyeuristic as well. say it's my most personal work yet um, and so I always like to focus on people and human habits and so this work this body of work is about separation um, it's something that I'm currently experiencing with my family and it's kind of also the reason I'm back here in Lagos now no regrets but <laughs> um, and so I wanted to share that with the viewers and kind of share my experience dealing with separation and loneliness and I think it's something that a lot of people can relate one way or the other um, with people leaving the country and leaving family behind I think it's something a lot of people will relate to. The young artists who have been given an opportunity to be part of this show talk about their artistic journey that led them to this point. My arts focus on my perception about my world how um, I process my, my, how I raise my environment, how I think about them. I tend to put them in visual language and sometimes in word forms. 
and it, it varies in different um, it varies in different um, materials. Sometimes some ideas want to be manifested in, in maybe plastics. Sometimes I choose to use foam. Sometimes I just stick with my pigment alone. Could be acrylic or oil. Or currently, I've been exploring foam and acrylic medium, and that's what you're seeing in this show as happening today here. They had to think out of the box to bring out something unique that will strike a chord and align with the gallery's expectations. I picked the team um, at SHIP and I did four pieces of work. There's one where it talks about an old um, perspective of, of headship. So, and then I walk people through that period of time where there used to be an original belief of what headship should be like. And what I experienced, or trauma bonding, a, an environment where we have um, men with their insecurity and toxic bonding and more. And then a period of time, which is the current situation of things, of how people view headship should be like and how some women are um, hunting for their freedom and how society have viewed them to my futuristic um, view or what I feel my imagination, what I hope to experience about Edship. So the works of art explore different issues dear to the creativities. My style, I always picture a particular subject and talk about their experiences, their, their challenges and everything that revolves around their life. Sometimes I pick someone very close to myself. Sometimes I talk about myself and my pieces. So if I don't try to understand how they live, or if I don't try to understand how I live, how they do I understand how people live. The, the works on display, one of them is titled Nostalgia. Is on to my left hand side. It's it's inspired by my childhood days in my grandma's house, whereby I used to run down the rails and play and have my free time. And this is is, is it's the reason why I focus on that idea is to to um, elaborate on the fact that we all need play time. We all need that time whereby we are all caught up on our way in our playful time. And for me, those days as a child as, as a child in my grandparents' house gave me that liberty to be free with my playful time and my cousins, how I relate with them, and through that I'm able to be more creative in today's, in today's world. Nomadic Art Gallery, we chose the name because we feel that um, African arts needs to travel. So the idea behind Nomadic Art Gallery is a little bit different than other galleries in that, yes, we have a physical space here in Lagos, but we also want the art gallery to be, the art that we have to be traveling, not only to other places in Africa, we've had exhibitions in Cape Town, in Johannesburg, in Nairobi, Kenya. We're also trying to set up an exhibition in Europe. So the idea is that we take our African artists and we try and bring them to Europe and we take African artists that are uh, living abroad and bring their art back to Africa so, so we can see it. So the whole idea is that we are helping art travel, if you will. while working on their diverse media. I work mainly on acrylic, with acrylic on canvas. Um, so acrylic paints is my, my preferred medium. Um, and I usually like working on rolled canvas, so canvas that has not been stretched or framed. And so it's something I'm kind of transitioning to. I'm transitioning into working on already stretched canvas and framed. Um, canvases because of cost, um, but I usually just paste my canvas on the wall and start working with first pen, pens and pencils, and then with paints. I 
I focus mostly on um, uh, rubber-based materials. Uh, I did use ink. I always combine my ink, different mediums, acrylic, uh, water-based, and um, paper. Uh, wood, I've dealt, dealt with acrylic uh, materials, polystyrene, and the likes. I build props, so I use a lot of these materials that are durable enough. I build furnitures that I use uh, foldable materials, light enough to create, recreate. And in reference to art and paintings, uh, my present time in this era is to use acrylic on canvas while emphasizing use of ink, uh, poster, and a good number of rubber-based materials. Contemporary artists feature in this group exhibition called Transtemporal Travel, which shows the ability of art to reach far and wide. Our worst myth for today is titled My Hairstyle, My Beauty by a Maxi Art. Braids, twists, and locks intertwined. African hairstyles stand the test of time. A symbol of cultural pride. They reflect a journey that's deep inside. Each strand tells a story of resilience, strength and glory. It's more than just a hairstyle. It represents people who've walked miles from the motherland to the diaspora. These hairstyles are a constant reminder of the beauty and diversity that is Africa's rich history. So let your hair be a crown, a testament to your roots that never frown. For each strand you braid or twist honors the ancestors on whose shoulders we exist. In the intricate twists and braids, I see the beauty of our African heritage. It's more than just a hairstyle. It's a reflection of our skin's rich texture and stature. Melanin-infused beauty shines through in the hues of our skin, deep and true. Color, shade and tone, Unique and pure, they represent a heritage that will forever endure. From kinky hair to fine strands, our curls are a symbol of strength and stands. Pores so intricate, unique and defined, reflect the history that's etched in our mind. Our beauty is not just skin deep, it's a journey that we have embarked to keep. African hairstyles and detailed skin pores represent the beauty of our souls and so much more. So let the tales of African mothers plating stories be told of detailed skin pores, melanin infused beauty so bold and let us never forget the love and sacrifice of these women who continue to inspire and ignite. Yes, we continue to ignite and inspire with our intriguing hairstyles from braids to twists, locks, and natural hair, which is our crown. Thank you so much, Ima, for acknowledging that and celebrating us on our wordsmith this week. Do stay tuned because Art House returns with more. Join us again. And these are the works of art you sent in recently. Let's begin with this oil on canvas piece titled Hope, done by Tinted Prosper.
Then my passion is how Taiwo Joshua titles this acrylic charcoal and mop on canvas work. This ballpoint pen on paperwork is done by Oscar Rikonu Art. It's titled Halo. Then this is a collaboration between Mike Willis and Moses John called Wazobia Praise, done with oil on canvas. Toby Awujola has this digital painting called Gem, which is the second in the series. While untitled Lady on White is an oil and acrylic on canvas piece done by Tosin Paul. Identity is Amelia's acrylic on canvas work. Then Girl with a Crystal Earring is an acrylic on canvas piece by Candy Mayowa. Peace with Strength is a charcoal pencil on canvas work done by Joshua Amusa, which concludes the works of art you sent in recently. We thank you so much for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. Perceptions, that's how these artists have called the exhibition at the Co Gallery in Lagos. Women creatives in all their glory make a case for their gender. In this exhibition, which interrogates the dynamics of representation and identity, examining cultural history, gender stereotypes, and social norms in Nigeria today at the Co Gallery in Lagos. We love championing female artists. It's a female gallery, and we have four female artists, uh, all mid career, which we, we love doing. Incorporating painting, sculpture and mixed media for artists they construct conventional perceptions of women while advocating for inclusivity, nuance and activism. Well, the reason why the works are mostly black and white is because I wanted to focus more on the expressions on the face and I felt color would be a distraction so there's a purity to the face without color. And then the works behind you are called My Precious and it's about um, geodes that are mined and a question to humanity that if we search for if we search for precious stones that are literally just stones um, if we go in search for them and we find human beings are we going to treat them as preciously as we treat the stones i think the important part about this exhibition is each female artist what they're doing and they're all mid-career, so they're all women who have had um, exposure, have been around, and it's really telling their story about their world and about Lagos, about Nigeria, and all about Nigerian fashion, Nigerian clothes, and Nigerian women, and the culture. The latest images by Pedro Latiche explore the narrative of Silifat, the protagonist of the artist's prior novel, telling the story of a girl who finds herself while Sir Carrie Douglas Kemp creates steel sculptures infusing central prominent characters in narratives inspired by Calabari heritage. The protagonist of my book 
is a young girl that was married off to a 73 year old man when she was 17. So I wrote a book about her and um, the paintings that you see are paintings of the model that I choose to be silver. I call myself a Peju Alatiche fanatic ever since I discovered her. When I see her art, whether it's her paintings, whether it's her art installations, whether it's her sculptures, it, elicits, it evokes something deep in my spirit. After seeing her art, and I go, it changes my mood, it changes my outlook. I feel more hopeful about our country, about our culture, about our society, about our talent, about our creativity, about you know, creating a better world. Juliet Ezenwa Pierce's vibrant paintings illustrate Nigerian women as regal, resilient and confident, highlighting their inherent power by emphasizing the significance of hairstyles and fashion as makers of identity. I began to portray African women looking their best as a response to mainstream media's portrayal of African women as poor, docile, needing saving and needing help, helpless, and in all kinds of negative light. And um, I, I didn't like it, and so I, I decided to create works with African women looking their best. And so when you engage a work like that, the Ten Virgins, you'll find that, that the girls in, those, in that picture are well-dressed, they are beautiful, they are pretty, and I wanted that kind of narrative to be said of African women and girls. And um, in some other works, you'll find that, that they are predominantly of females, of African females, no matter what the color I have used for their skin, because I believe that their Africanness is beyond the color of their skin. And so I tend to portray them in very uh, brilliant, bright, happy colors, as to counter that negative narrative coming out of Africa about women. Chinwe Waze employs the abstract Uli style of the Nsuka school, drawing inspiration from everyday life while using her paintings to assist the preservation of femininity in Uli designed forms. Uh, my sister belongs to the Uli School of Art, which is an art school that originated at the University of Nigeria. She trained there in the 1980s, and what you can see there is the classical expression of the school. Uli is a traditional Igbo form of body art, body tattoos, if you will, but more similar to Hina tattoos. And the Uli School of Art drew their inspiration from the traditional Uli body art. And so you can see it in the way the paintings almost as calligraphy, the kind of calligraphy that Uli had, which is their motivation. And my sister is one of the well-known exponents of that of art. And of course, I'm proud to see her work here, as I'm always proud to see her work in exhibitions all over the world. These artists are vocal about the realities as it affects their gender side by side with the way they are perceived. If you thought that was amazing, then check out what we have lined up for you on the next episode of the program. Next week on Art House. We enjoy the journey, a group exhibition by SMO Contemporary in Lagos. While in another part of Nigeria's commercial capital, we're soaking the Life in My City Art Festival, which showcases an array of creativity. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your Art House experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels.
We're everywhere. That's Art House this week. Thank you so much for being a big part of it. And I look forward to interacting with you on our various social media platforms. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative.